Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to do our first factory IO uh, configuration and project. So factory IO with the Siemens S7 1200 PLC. So the first thing we're going to open is the TIA portal for Siemens. We're going to start a new project in there. We're going to call it factory IO project one. Create new project. Factory, I'm just going to call it factory one. How about that? Create takes a minute to create. Then if you remember, our next step will be going to project view. Down here, we're going to add our processor. Add new device is going to be a double click. We're in controllers. S7-1200. I have a 1212C ACDC relay, and I have the middle firmware. There's also a way if you don't know what you have, or if you have uh, it's in an enclosure that you're not connected to, where you can automatically detect processor, but we know what we have, so that's that there, hit OK, now I'll add my processor, eventually. And if you remember, after we have our processor, the next thing we're going to do is add our tags, but we don't know what we're going to program yet. Um, so let me just go online and make sure that we can connect to this processor. And we should be able to. But that'll be the only setup for now. Next, we're going to go into the factory I.O. Eventually. This is a pretty fast computer I'm on now. If you're on a slower computer, sometimes this TIA software takes quite a while. So while we're waiting for that, we should be able to go down here and open up factory IO. Hopefully that TIA portal is not going to lock up. So here's what factory IO looks like. Back over here. And yeah, that's not good. Go over here to factory IO and we see when we open factory IO, this is what it comes to the welcome screen. Um, this is getting started. This will be basically the navigation, how to, uh, here, down here, you hit to the right to go to the next page. It tells you how to do all the camera angles and how to zoom in and rotate and all that kind of stuff. Um, then it goes through opening, opening a scene, creating scene, manually controlling scene. I'm going to show you how to open a scene and how to use your, uh, Siemens PLC to control it. So this opens up in a web browser. So just cross that out and you're back to here. Here's the factory IO manuals. Um, here's the available parts, all the different types of parts that are in this program that you can drag to create your uh, virtual factory. This is an important one. Um, if you haven't seen factory IO, we'll go to scenes here. There are all these different scenes and they list all the IO uh, to control the scene. So they give you a scene and a task and you have to write the logic and run the logic that's going to run the virtual scene. Um, to figure out what you're supposed to do with the scene because you'll open it up and it'll just be a bunch of stuff on the on the page and you're not exactly sure what the task is sometimes you can go in here and again that is in the welcome section on the far right on scenes and it will list every scene that's in here and what you're supposed to do so like this one flank tank you click on it most of these are a youtube video and then you play them and it shows you an example so you're supposed to press the fill button it looks like it's a timer that counts down and it's displayed here uh, while it's filling and okay it stopped filling this light went out so the io is also these bulbs and push buttons too so the push button will be an input and an output the input will be when you press it and then the output will be turning the light onto it so here's a discharge button with a light and then it counts back down and discharges um, but you can kind of see what you're supposed to do um, close that and what else? Here's some specifics on different types of processors. Let me go see what my TIA portal is doing. And it looks like it froze up. So I will close that. And we all kind of the stuff in here. Anything that is Siemens, I'm going to end task. Now let's see how we do. The splash screen loaded fast. So anyway, back to the factory IO. We are going to go to scenes. 
and we're going to pick scene number one from A to B. Transport a box until it reaches a sensor. And this is what it looks like, and you can you can move around and zoom in and zoom out. I can't remember all the navigation tricks here, but you, there's, you can get it in every different angle. So there's a conveyor motor down there, which is going to be an output. You see it says conveyor. Um, here's a sensor. So you just want this conveyor to run the whole time until it hits that sensor. When the sensor uh, changes state, you want the conveyor to stop. So pretty easy. Um, I'm going to go back here, and it did not create my new project. And I'm just going to say factory IO 1, FIO 1. Create. How oh, that's going. Oh, it's actually a little faster than I was expecting. Project view. Add a new device. The 71200 processor, 1212C, ACDC relay. Middle firmware, hit OK. Uh, let's see what it's going to do for us here. And there it is. And I'm going to try to go online again and see if this works. So that time it worked. I did exactly the same thing. So if you remember from the Siemens video, it'll look like this. You hit start search and the processor that we defined up here should populate in this box down here. We'll select it and we'll hit go online. And then we know we have um, the ability to connect. So right there it is, it's highlighted already, hit go online. Now it's orange, so I'm online with the processor. What's in the processor does not match, but we're not gonna worry because we're gonna write new logic and put it in anyway. Um, this is why I wanted to make sure I could connect before I went in here and wrote all the logic and then it locked up. <laughs> so you saw how it locked up and we had to restart it. If I had went in here and written all the logic for factory IO, and then went to download it to the processor, and that's when it locked up. I could have lost it all, but now that I know I, I'm currently online, it uh, should be good to go. So all these are for different things you can view. So that's the sensor tags. See that it said uh, sensor one there. If I click it, it'll say sensor one, and then there's some options. You can force it on, you can release it, or do whatever. I usually don't mess with those. Um, this is for actuator tags. So those are outputs basically. So the conveyor motor there just like it says zero conveyor. Let's give you that. Um, this is the camera view that I'm in right now, which I'm going to keep that the way it is. And this will get rid of this big box. We didn't need that. So all we really need to see is this scene here. Get it kind of centered. We want this motor to run until that breaks. So the first thing we need to do is configure the driver to connect to the PLC. Go to file drivers. Up here you select what type of processor you have. Um, I have the S7-1200. Uh, go to configuration. I select auto connect. That's what I configured already. It's going to ask you what your IP address is right here. And you find that on TIA. So you go into TIA, go to devices and networks, and device view. It's pretty slow. Oh, yeah, I can select it up here. So I'm going to select my device, not the little box in the middle there, but the outside edge, and then go down here to properties. And then under general, the next one down is Profinet interface. Open that up, go to Ethernet address. Scroll down a little bit. This is the address 192.168.0.1. Yours could be different. So if I go back to factor IO, 192.168.0.1. So you type this in off of what your processor's IP actually is. Um, and network adapter, I only have one network adapter on this computer, so it's this one. Um, you might have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all these other options. You select the one that's the actual Ethernet. This key can leave by default. This is for how big of a word you want to use for analog values. You need word or double word there. Um, this offset. For these PLCs, it's advisable to put 10 in the offset because there's difficulty sometimes um, with factor IO trying to force your inputs to be on or off. They get overwritten by the real world inputs, which aren't connected to anything. So if you put this at 10, it puts it out of the range of the real world inputs, and then they don't get overwritten by the real world inputs. Um, so put your offset to 10, the Boolean inputs offset 10. 
and then don't hit the bottom like a lot of these are set up where you hit save at the bottom if you hit this it just changes everything back to the defaults and erases all your settings um, and then here's the model it defaults to 1200 and that's what we have so this is all set correctly and oddly there's no confirmation you just hit back there we are um, and up here if you don't have it to auto connect up here it'll have the option to connect and you click it and it has a little red checkbox so that means we're online with it and you can see the states of our sensors so these are the set the conveyor and the sensor that are inside our animation that's the conveyor motor that's the sensor so we are seeing in our driver what the io addresses of those are so you see uh, input 10.0 is the sensor because we set the offset to 10 so the first sensor input address is going to be start at 10.0 and the next one will be 10.1 um, our outputs we didn't put an offset so it's going to start at zero zero here is another little trick that doesn't seem like it's worth messing with now because there's only two things um, here we can export our tags tag export um, it says created successfully and hit okay now i'm going to open my folder okay i've got a bunch of them in here I'm just going to drag this over to the desktop so I know where it's at and close this. Um, we just exported an XML file that has all the tag information, the addresses and the names of the tags. That's what we just did right there. So when we go over to TIA portal, we can go into our uh, PLC tags, hit uh, show all tags, it'll double click. One of these up here is the import, export, import. Now I can find these tags, I put them on the desktop, and they're right there. So it looks like a garbled mess here, but this is XML. Um, hit open, hit OK. Now our tags are automatically in here. So it copied over the correct addresses and the correct names and everything from the Factor IO software. You can type all these in manually if you want to, but eventually you get into scenarios where there's like 25 tags in here. So I don't think you want to write all this out yourself. Um, you should write some out yourself to get used to selecting the right data type and to understand what it looks like when you're changing from an input to output and all this over here. It's, if after you do it once or twice, it's kind of self-explanatory. But after you get used to it and you're using ones that um, have like 25 IO points over here, you don't have to sit here and copy all that over. So that's a little trick. Um, so what do we have now? Um, we have the conveyor that's going to be running unless the sensor is made. So the first thing I want to check is, is the sensor outputting right now or not? So if you go to drivers, if it's dark, it's false. If it's lit up, it's true. Um, so this is lit up. So that tells me that I want to put a normally open for that sensor, if you're following me here. So I want this thing to run until the sensor is broken by the box. So it's it's sending out a signal right now. So if I use a normally open contact, it'll be closed until this thing gets there and then it'll break it. So I will show you what that means here. Now that we already have our tags, we can jump right into writing our logic. So we'll go to the program block. We will, oh, I still have this old. It's weird that that left that in there right create a new project. Let's see, oh, did I copy it out of the processor? Um, yeah, let me go offline here. This is uh, interesting that that function is still in there. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, so this looks right already. So what you would do is, let me delete all this quick. Or maybe not quick. Oh, because I'm online, it doesn't want me to do it. Go offline. Now we'll go to. Yeah, so now that function is not there now that I'm offline. So we were looking at some stuff that was in the processor from before that hadn't been overwritten. So now we need to add a new block. Sorry, that's going to be extra confusing for everybody. And we can just use a function because we don't need memory. It's a ladder, it's just going to be called block one. Okay. Now we have a block here to put our logic in. We're going to make that sensor a normally open contact and we're going to put an output for the motor and that should be all we need and since we copied our tags over we can go here and that's the sensor because our tags are already in there and our conveyor is the output 
So copy it over output 00, zero and sensor is input 10.0. Uh, so that is all the logic we need, but if you remember, we still have to put the function block in OB1. So we'll drag that over to there. Otherwise, it won't get executed because the only thing that runs is OB1 when you start the program. So now we have OB1 calling our function one. In function one, we have our normally open sensor. It's normally open because when you look at it, you can see that it is true right now because it's lit up. Um, that's why we want to normally open instead of a normally closed because we want this to allow the conveyor to run until that sensor is broken. So let me compile this. Let me right click on the processor and compile and software only changes on the alert. And we got one warning. Okay, so the warning that we got is inputs or outputs are used that do not exist in the configured hardware, which is true because we set that offset. So there is no input 10 on this processor. It's just a warning though, so we can still download it. If it was an error, we wouldn't be able to download it. Um, so we know that's true because we're, we're using like imaginary inputs, right? Um, now we are going to right click and go to download to device. Um, Software only changes. And we're going to stop all. It just takes the processor out of run mode while we're loading it. And then if it says, what do you want to do basically after this? And you want to put it back in run mode. So it's going back in run mode. And now to see this in real time, we can click the glasses up here. And you'll see that the conveyor is receiving the signal to run. So let's go back to factory IO. The reason it's not running yet is because you have to play on your simulation here. So now when I hit play, it should run until it breaks this beam. And when it breaks the beam, it should stop. So let me see if I can get, hey, I think we can. I think we're going to be able to see this thing go and see the sensor change at the same time. There it went. So you see the sensor drop out, and this is, um, I didn't get to find a good example of it last time, how you can see when it's green the whole way across, you know that it's true, instead of just a highlighted little box like a lot of uh, the older Allen Bradley stuff has, it shows you the full path of where where the um, signal is being stopped, basically. So you can hit the restart button there, and it'll play again. So the conveyor is made until this changes state, and when that changes state, that goes to input 10 in the processor, of the you know the actual processor running the real software changes state and it drops that output out which is controlling the conveyor motor and that is it so that is how you set up that was kind of there'll probably be issues when you try to do it that i haven't covered here but this is the basics of what you're trying to do so you have an imaginary factory and you get your io points from the driver um, and you have to set your Configuration, your inputs, uh, offset should be 10. Um, if all the rest of this is correct, when you go here, you see a green check mark and you'll see everything looks like it's online. And that's it. So you just uh, remember to compile and download, make sure all this is green. If you want to watch this in real time, you can uh, go online and then hit the little glasses up here to monitor. So we are going to go offline. Minimize this, and that's it. So after you write the logic and execute the first program, you save your project in TIA portal and send it to me. And then you go to home and scenes and go to your next scene. Sure, I'll see. Go to scenes. Go to second. This is the second one. So I believe in this scenario, let me check it. Yeah. So in this scenario, this conveyor is on all the time. This conveyor is not on. There's a motor back there. Let me stop it. There's a conveyor back here. So this conveyor is forced on all the time. As soon as this sensor breaks, you're supposed to energize this conveyor to get it to push all the way to the end and then have it stop when it breaks this one. So it's slightly different, but just kind of getting you used to the interface. And that's it. All right. Good luck, guys.